Hello and welcome to this act of worship on video for High Street Methodist Church in Whitney. My name is Rachel, I'm a local preacher and a member of the church and I want to extend a warm welcome to all of you whether you're a regular member of our church congregation when we meet in person, whether it's your first time viewing us on video or whether you've been with us for a while during this Covid season. You might like to grab yourself a Bible, which we're going to use uh, a bit later on. And to start today's worship, we're going to watch a, a couple of worship videos to help us prepare to come before God this morning. <music> God of creation, there at the start, before the beginning of time. With no point of reference, you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of life. And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born in the vapor of your breath. The planets form, and if the stars were made to worship, so light, I can see your heart in it. Every burning star signal fire grace And if creation sings your praises so
chase down my heart through all of my failure and pride. On the hill you created, the light of the world, abandoned in darkness to die. And as you speak, a hundred billion failures disappear. Well, you lost your life, so I can find it. theme for this morning is going to be looking at the authority and the authority of Jesus. We're going to continue with Mark's gospel which we started looking at last week and we will continue to look at throughout this lectionary year. In a short while we're going to watch a video which will give us some of that context and background to the gospel, an idea of who Mark was writing for, its structure and what we might expect to find in the reading that we have today. But first, we're going to sing our first hymn. At home, we can sing as loud as we like. This will be a new song to most of you, but you'll pick it up quite easily after the first verse. It's called, O Lord, I'll Sing. Praise for all to see. 
The Gospel of Mark is a book in the Bible about the life of Jesus. And the earliest reliable tradition tells us that it was written by a guy named John Mark. Now, Mark didn't just grab a bunch of random stories about Jesus and throw them together. He's designed this book to address some really specific questions about whether or not Jesus was the Jewish Messiah. So let's stop right there because that's a term a lot of people like me aren't very familiar with. Yeah, so the Messiah was a royal figure, sometimes called the Son of God, that Israel was expecting to come and set up a kingdom here on earth. And around the time of Jesus, Israel was occupied by Rome, and so many Jews were hoping that the Messiah would come and overthrow the Romans and rule as king. But Jesus didn't overthrow the Romans. In fact, he was killed by them. And that brings us to the very issues Mark is trying to get at in this book. So in the first half, he focuses on who Jesus is. Is he really the Messiah? And then in the second half, he's addressing how Jesus became the Messianic King. And then right here in the middle of the book is this pivotal story that brings the two halves together and Jesus answers both of these questions. Okay, so let's talk about the first half of the book, who Jesus is. So Mark makes his beliefs about Jesus very clear from the first line of the book. The beginning of the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God. One of the next stories is Jesus getting baptized and God's voice announces from heaven, this is my son. So it couldn't be more clear, it's presenting Jesus as the Messiah. Yes, but as you're reading through this first half of Mark, you'll notice something really interesting start to happen. Jesus is going about healing all these different people and he's constantly telling them to keep quiet about who he is. This happens so many times in Mark's account, it's very strange. Yeah, why keep it a secret? So remember, lots of Jews had lots of different expectations about what the Messiah would be and do. And so Jesus doesn't want people to misunderstand what it means for him to be Israel's Messiah. Today's reading is from the chapter one of Mark's Gospel. It follows on from the reading that was covered in last week's video. Mark's Gospel is fast paced. We're not even halfway through the first chapter and Jesus has been baptised. He's called his first disciples and they've set out on his ministry. In today's reading, Jesus arrives in Capernaum with the disciples where he goes on the Sabbath to the temple and he preaches and teaches. People are amazed at the authority that he has. He speaks as if he is the word. And then he proves, he, he acts out what he preaches and gives freedom to a man who has a bad spirit, who heals him. At this point, I'm going to invite you to stop the video and grab your Bibles or your tablets or whatever you read your Bible on and look up the text that is on the screen and read it once through for yourself or more if you like. And then when you've done that, please restart the video and then we will hear the reading uh, read for us by Debbie. Welcome back. Now you have some idea, having read the reading, what it's about today. Who the characters are, where it's set. Now as Debbie reads for us now, I want you to put yourself into the reading. I want you to imagine that you are one of the characters there. It might be that as you read the Bible passage, one of the characters in the story stood out for you. Maybe it was as a disciple. Maybe it was as one of the teachers that was in the temple. Maybe it was the man who was healed. Maybe you're just a bystander that just happened to be in the, in the temple on the Sabbath that day. But as you listen to Debbie Reed, imagine yourself there. Try and see what's going on through the eyes of the character that you have taken on. The reading comes from Mark 1 verses 21 to 28. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching, because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then, a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an impure spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, 
the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The impure spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, what is this? A new teaching? And with authority? He even gives orders to impure spirits and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. Thank you, Debbie. Now, I wonder, which character did you see that reading through? Perhaps you were one of the disciples. You've not been with Jesus long. You were called from your nets, from a way of life that you were very familiar with and comfortable with. You've been called and you followed Jesus. You're not quite sure why, perhaps, but there is something about him that you knew everything would be fine. Today you've come into the temple with Jesus on the Sabbath, a tradition that you were so familiar with, but today it felt different. For here was when you heard Jesus preach, you heard him open the scriptures, you heard him speak like you'd never heard anyone speak before and you could see how that was making the Pharisees and the scribes and the teachers feel very uncomfortable. And then you could hear this kerfuffle as the man who was disturbed was making his presence felt. Perhaps you wondered what would happen next. Perhaps it made you feel a little bit uncomfortable. Perhaps you could see those around the man beginning to move away. But then you not only heard Jesus speak with authority, you saw him act with authority. You saw him command the spirit that was within the man to come out. This man, this Jesus, was special. Now perhaps you were one of the teachers or the scribes. You were there doing your weekly duty, there to teach in the temple on the Sabbath, that tradition that you know so well. And you were teaching just as you always had, referring to other people who were taught long ago, teaching people about the rules and the ways of life that were in their scriptures. But there was this other man that turned up, a visiting preacher. That's not unusual, perhaps, but this man, when he spoke, you couldn't believe what you were hearing. When you read and teach in the temple, you are passing on words that others have said before you. You are passing on the rules by which your fellow Jews should live. But this man... This man was talking as if he was the word. How incredible. But it doesn't perhaps make you feel good. Perhaps you feel a bit threatened. Who is this man that he should talk like this? And then there was that man who came who was shouting and causing a disturbance. You've seen him before and normally we have to turn him out. But Jesus, no, this man went up to the man who was shouting and declaring who he was, actually saying the things that perhaps you thought yourself but wouldn't have dared utter. Saying, have you come to destroy us? And let's be honest, that's perhaps what you were thinking. This man who speaks with such authority. But he shows such kindness and commands with authority that the spirit come out of the man. The spirit howls and leaves. 
This man doesn't just speak with authority. He commands authority in the way that he lives. Perhaps you were the man with the spirit. Would you not know his story? But perhaps you've come to the temple that day with that sense of a cloud hanging over you, feeling unsettled, perhaps having come to the temple for some comfort. And you hear someone that you have never heard before. It's a problem because you can feel the voices building up inside you, inside your head. You know you should keep quiet, but they just take over. Who are you, the Holy One of God? Have you come to destroy us? You've been here before. You've shouted out on the Sabbath like this before. And quite often you find yourself thrown out. But not today. For this man with the kind eyes comes to you and with a stern voice commands the spirit come out. And you're amazed because the spirit obeys. You may not have heard much of what he said because such was the inward, inward battle with the spirits and the voices in your head. But you heard this man Jesus when he commanded the spirit to come out of you. And you felt it go. And you know that you have been healed. I wonder what you would have thought if you were watching. What marked Jesus out? What set him apart? Jesus was preaching words of freedom. He wasn't preaching words of restraint, of rules, of regulations which people usually heard. He was preaching something different. Freedom. He was the word. It came from him. But he also had to demonstrate it too. And that was how he would continue to live and work. Teaching but also being the physical embodiment of the power and the freedom of which he spoke about. We are all disciples of Jesus. We seek to learn from him just as those early disciples did. But it's important that not only that we try to say the right things and spread his word, but that we live like his word. But unfortunately, because we are human, we fail. And often. But such is the mercy of God that we can try again and again and again and again. The difficulty is, of course, that as Christians we're sometimes put up on a pedestal. And people view church members from the outside as being people who are holier than now and people who are perfect. Whereas those of us inside know we are far from perfect and that is why we are in church. That is why we follow this man called Jesus. That is why we know that we can start again. We've heard over the last couple of weeks about the challenge of being called. We are called as Jesus' disciples. And in that comes a challenge because now we are Jesus' eyes and ears and hands and feet on this earth. It is our job, like John the Baptist, to point people towards Jesus. 
we don't always do our best job. Either as individuals or as a church. And that can be a problem. Because sometimes that can put off and turn away people who Jesus is also calling. But it is always our calling and always up to us to keep trying and trying and trying again to live that authority that Jesus had and to act it out in our daily lives. Jane is now going to lead us in a time of prayer. As we pray together, shall we just be still for a moment, each in our own homes, but join together. Living Lord, we look to you. You are our King, our Shepherd, our Guide, our Strength. Thank you that in these times of uncertainty you hold all authority and wisdom. You are all powerful, all knowing, and we trust you. Our world is broken and the way seems dark. Thank you that you know all we go through, you know the way, and that you call us to walk with you. Living Lord, we look to you. Living Lord, we listen for you. Help us to hear you above the clamour of the news which bombards us each day. May your voice of authority ring out, guiding scientists working on vaccines, doctors making decisions, teachers reaching out to children. Speak your wisdom to leaders. Speak your words of encouragement to each of us. Whisper your love and compassion so that we see your light in the darkness. Living Lord, we listen for you. Living Lord, empower us. Gift us with words, with prayers, with love, so that we may become bearers of your light and hope for others. Gift us with insight. Gift us with perseverance and patience. Lift us to look beyond ourselves and think of others. Grant us understanding, empathy, kindness and more kindness. Bless us with eyes which shine above our masks and voices which reflect your love. Kindness shown in the street, time spent listening on the phone, care crafted in a letter, good news shared in an email, hope offered, love shared. Living, powerful, forgiving Lord, we thank you that you bear with our failings and our frailties, that you stand alongside us in our fears and set us on our feet again. Thank you for your promise that you are with us always. As a family, your family, loving Lord, we join together in the prayer you gave us. As we share in these oh-so-familiar words, May they speak more powerfully than ever of your majesty and authority, living Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Now we know that there is such a wide variety of people who listen to our services each week. But if you are somebody who is not a regular member of our congregation... This message might be particularly for you. As you have joined us over the weeks, perhaps you have had questions that you'd like answers to. If that's you, we're going to be shortly running an online Alpha course. It's an opportunity to explore God, to explore this message that he has for you, 
to explore how God loves you as you are unconditionally. If you're interested in pursuing uh, the Alpha course, please respond to Jason, our minister, on the email address that's on the screen. And that invitation is open to anybody, whether you're a visitor or a regular member of the congregation. Sometimes we all have questions. And if we've been at church a long time, we might be a bit scared of asking the questions for fear of looking silly. But also, we'd like to reach out to those of you who perhaps were once members of our congregation. But for whatever reason, you moved away from us. If there's something that put you off, something that we were doing or something that was said, we'd really like to know because we'd really like to welcome you back. If there's something that you would like to see us doing more of because that would interest you more, again, we would like to know. And please, we'd be so, so grateful if you could contact Jason, our minister, on the email address below and let him know so that perhaps we can try and do something about it so that we might soon be able to welcome you back. Thank you for worshipping with me today and thank you to all of those who have taken part both in front of the screen and in our earshot and behind the screen. Our closing song today sung by our worship singers is Lord you sometimes speak in wonders. Sometimes speak in whispers, still and small and scarcely heard. Only those who want to listen catch the all important word. Oh Lord, you sometimes speak in whispers. Thank you.